I'm Pete Vermillier for Litchfield.bz and HiddenInPlainSightBlog.com and today we're going to talk about Litchfield's historic trees. Litchfield has a long history of using trees for both practical and commemorative purposes. We are in front of the Litchfield Historical Society where there is a small marker commemorating the sign post elm. Now the elm trees of Litchfield on the green are long gone. They were wiped out by the by the Dutch elm blight, Dutch elm disease in the early 1930s. But this was a particularly important tree in town and that's why it has this marker commemorating it. This was uh, the social media. This was the Facebook of the day for Litchfield back in the around 1800. The sign post elm was used to post notices about town meetings and auctions and uh, sheriff events in town and it was also the site of important uh, events in the town like vendue auctions. A vendue auction was where the, uh, the people in town who could not support themselves would be auctioned off and the town would pay families to take them in. The family had to provide food and clothing and shelter for the, for the impoverished, and in return, the uh, family that took them in could exact as much work from them as possible. Litchfield's trees weren't just practical, they were also noted early on for their beauty. Uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne came through town in the 1830s and he wrote about how beautiful the trees up and down North and South Street were. And Henry Ward Beecher, who grew up in Litchfield, returned to town in the 1850s and wrote a long piece about Litchfield's trees and how much he remembered as a child and how much he enjoyed laying under those stately elms and watching the tops of the trees blow in the wind. Litchfield residents are reminded every day about the beauty of one particular tree in town. The, uh, any driver knows that North Street and South Street in Litchfield don't line up and that you have to take a left turn coming off of South Street and then a right turn onto North Street and we all know how much traffic we can sit in. That's because there was a beautiful oak tree that stood in between on the direct line of those roads and the earliest settlers of Litchfield thought that the tree was too beautiful to cut down and so they made the road go around the tree. We're standing in front of the Historical Society on the corner of South Street and East Street and we're looking down at the green at three trees that all are commemorative trees. We are on the eastern end of the Litchfield Green. We're looking to the west and we're looking at three commemorative oak trees planted by the town. The furthest on the left, the one closest to South Street, honors the 507 men from Litchfield who served in the Revolutionary War. This tree was planted by the Daughters of the American Revolution on Arbor Day in 1902 and a small marker commemorates the service of those men. The central oak tree honors Captain George Colville Caressis who lived in Litchfield and who was a hero of the Battle of Manila Bay in the Spanish-American War, fought in 1898. The town of Litchfield held a, de held a day in Captain Colva Caressis' honor in 1899, and the New York Times reported that Captain Colva Caressis planted that tree himself with a golden trowel that was presented to him by the town. A small marker in front of that tree commemorates Captain Colva Caressis' service at Manila Bay. The third oak, the one closest to North Street, honors President William McKinley. That tree was planted also on Arbor Day, 1902, by the Daughters of the American Revolution to honor the president who had been assassinated the previous September. At one time, there was a marker in front of that tree, but the marker has since been destroyed. We're on the eastern end of the Litchfield Green, and behind me is the Constitution Oak. Connecticut revised its constitution in 1818 after the Revolutionary War era, but that constitution, while it gave towns between one and four representatives in the state legislature, towns like New Haven had a hundred times more people than towns like Union or Falls Village. And so these smaller towns felt that this was unfair. 
and ask for a new constitutional convention. That constitutional convention was held in 1902. Every town in the state sent a delegate. Litchfield's delegate was Charles Andrews, who at one time had been the governor of Connecticut and who at that time was serving as the chief justice of the Connecticut Supreme Court. Every, every representative was given a pin oak seedling to plant in their town to commemorate the new constitution. And while this pin oak seedling has grown into this great oak standing behind me, the constitution was never ratified. These small towns felt that uh, they wanted to cling to the power that they held in the legislature before that convention. And the larger towns felt they were not getting adequate, still not getting adequate representation. In 2002, a survey was held of how many of these pin oak trees were still standing in the state. And while 188 were planted, there are only 74. As of 2002, only 74 still standing. Looking at the Litchfield Jail, we're looking at the site of one of Litchfield's practical historic trees, the Whipping Post Elm, which stood here on the corner of West Street and North Street in front of the jail. The jail was also the home of the sheriff, and Litchfield's sheriff used whipping as a form of punishment. This Whipping Post Elm was small enough so that the prisoner would put his hands around the tree where he'd be handcuffed, and then he could be whipped. Now, the last recorded whipping in Litchfield was in 1815. I'm standing in front of St. Anthony's Church on South Street, and in 1776, Oliver Walcott, who lived a few doors down, signed the Declaration of Independence. And to commemorate American independence, he planted 13 trees up and down North and South Street in Litchfield, one to commemorate each of the new states. This tree behind me is the last of the surviving original 13 trees. We are back in front of the Litchfield Historical Society, and behind me is the Lincoln Oak. This tree was planted in 1920 as part of Litchfield's bicentennial celebration, and the acorn from which this tree sprouted was found at the tomb of Abraham Lincoln in Springfield, Illinois. For Litchfield.bz and HiddenInPlainSightBlog.com, I'm Pete Vermillier.